My name is Amr Azim. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist at New York City IVF. Um, I want to talk to you today about embryo selection after IVF. Um, so you've done IVF and you have a good number of uh, mature eggs that were fertilized and you have now uh, a group or a cohort of embryos. And uh, uh, the task uh, that you and your doctor should exert is to select uh, uh, the, the best embryo for transfer or embryos for transfer. Um, who needs uh, uh, embryo selection after IVF? Everybody does. Um, and the aim is to transfer the embryo that, or the embryos that will most likely lead to pregnancy. And the second aim is to minimize the number of embryos to be transferred so that then the uh, number of babies conceived are minimized. Uh, in, in other words, the risk of multiple pregnancy is reduced because multiple pregnancy is a high risk pregnancy and exposed to many problems to the baby, especially if preterm delivery happens. The standard of care for selecting um, embryos after IVF for transfer is a combination of morphology or shape of these embryos and age. Um, we look at the embryos in the lab after their creation, whether they are on day three or they are on day five, and we, uh, we use accurate grading systems to uh, uh, prioritize uh, which embryo should be transferred first and which embryo uh, should be transferred next and so on. And this includes the size of the embryo, the number of cells, the expansion of the embryo, and other uh, different morphological or shape related points uh, and based on that we grade the embryos as the best quality and then the second best and the second best and so on. Um, this morphology in itself does not predict 100% uh, a pregnancy um, and because of that we also consider uh, the age of the female partner um, because the implantation ability or the baby making ability of, of an embryo is reduced if it comes from an older uh, uh, woman than from a younger woman. And uh, um, because of that, the number of embryos tend to, that are selected for transfer tend to be uh, more or increased uh, in older women than in younger women. And this is the standard of care. Uh, in the past uh, years, uh, an, another added method was uh, uh, developed and became also standard in the majority of, of embryology laboratories, which is extended culture. Um, uh, one way of selecting an embryo is to extend the culture on day three, which is three days after retrieving the egg and fertilizing the embryo, and, and extend that uh, uh, to day five, um, which is the blastocyst stage, and um, uh, the, further observe the morphology of the embryo and those that develop into blastocysts um, uh, are more likely to implant than those that did not develop into blastocysts or progress into a blastocyst or day five stage. Uh, in addition, the blastocysts, the blastocysts that result from a cycle are also graded and then the, the better shaped blastocysts based on a specific criteria uh, uh, is transferred or are transferred back into the uterus. Uh, so the standard is uh, uh, morphology, age, and sometimes also extended culture to a blastocyst or day five stage. Um, in the past uh, uh, two years, there has been uh, some proposed uh, advances in the science and the art of selection of embryos for transfer uh, following IVF. One such method is uh, uh, time-lapse photography. Uh, and this is simply a special incubator that, uh, op the, the, uh, that has a camera, and the camera takes shots of the um, embryos uh, at specific points, time points, and uh, based on the number of cells uh, in the embryo and the regularity of uh, division of these cells, the growth of the embryo, does it happen uniformly in all cells and, uh, and not, could be evaluated by an embryologist or by software. And um, uh, initial work has shown that they may 
better predict uh, the better embryo for transfer. Um, so far, there has not been a large scale study showing that uh, time lapse photography of the embryos uh, increases the chance of uh, um, uh, a person getting pregnant uh, or uh, uh, better selection of uh, embryos for transfer. And because of that, this method remains investigational and uh, there is no proof to its efficacy at this point, although it could be promising in the future if studies would show that it might be helpful, but so far there is no proof that it actually improves the chance of getting pregnant. And then the other advance that um, uh, uh, sort of uh, metamorphosed from the past uh, was pre is pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. Simply pre-implantation in genetic diagnosis uh, means uh, a biopsy is taken from the embryo, um, which is one cell or few cells, and it could be done on day three, three days after retrieval of the eggs and fertilization, uh, uh, or day five, which is uh, the blastocyst stage. And these cells are analyzed for chromosomes uh, because chromosomally, normal embryos are much more likely to implant than chromosomally abnormal embryos and then identify uh, the one that the, the, the one or more embryos that would have normal chromosomes and preferentially transfer those and discard the others that have abnormal chromosomes um, now uh, it, it, this was practiced in the past using an old technology called fish and was done on day three and it was shown that that was actually a harmful practice. More recently, this is now performed on day five uh, uh, from the uh, outer layer of cells in the blastocyst that makes the placenta and then is analyzed by more sophisticated uh, genetic methods like a, a comparative genomic hybridization or CGH or other types of arrays. Uh, and uh, they uh, uh, detect uh, generally time uh, di different specific points at the DNA of each chromosome uh, to indicate how many uh, how many copies at that point exist. And if the, the right number is two copies of uh, of uh, each chromosome of, of each chromosome, and the wrong number would be one copy or three copies or any other number. Um, now. Uh, Although a very attractive principle, you test the embryos and then you transfer normal embryos. Uh, the, there are many points to be considered before this is uh, ready for widespread application for everybody. Um, so the embryo has to expand to uh, a certain uh, stage before the biopsy could be done. So not all embryos are suitable for that, for, for biopsy. And uh, you also assume that when you take few cells from the embryo, this would represent the rest of the cells in the embryo. And that is not the case. Sometimes you would have abnormal cells while the rest of the embryo is normal and vice versa. Um, also, you would, one would assume that the platform or the method used for analysis of the DNA of the chromosomes of the cells biopsied from the embryo is 100% accurate and that's not true. Uh, they're probably 90% uh, uh, give or take accurate. And because of all these factors and others, um, uh, the, the me these methods can misdiagnose an embryo. In other words, they can tell you this embryo is normal while it's not. And they can also tell you this embryo is abnormal, not normal, while it is. And the most important thing to consider that, that just because you are testing an embryo does not mean you're creating actually um, uh, healthy embryos. You're just detecting what you have. And uh, because of that, the total potential uh, uh, that will come from an IVF cycle is never changed, is not changed. You, the potential will remain the same. You don't create normal, um, more normal embryos or less normal embryos because of that. And using this method also exposes you to the, uh, uh, to the faulty diagnosis of it, of, of, uh, of the embryos. And so far, there has not been a, a, a very well conducted prospective study that compares uh, um, selection using morphology and placing one embryo uh, based on, mor on morphology or shape uh, versus selection using 
these molecular or genetic methods uh, and, sh uh, and placing the same number of embryos in both cases and showing superiority of one method over another. So, and, and because of that, um, um, many people still consider this method um, uh, not an established method for um, uh, utilization or use for uh, everyone. Uh, one um, other point of caution is how, how would one consider success after IVF? Because this is, understanding this point is very integral to, to uh, the, the selection of the method that, to use for um, uh, 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 preferentially uh, transferring one embryo over another. If one would consider uh, success uh, after considering all the embryos that came from one stimulation and one egg retrieval, then uh, the, then the uh, methods of uh, selection uh, uh, used are not going to have an, any increase in potential because you are because you, you you it's fine enough to get pregnant in the first in the fresh cycle uh, as long as you get pregnant in the with the subsequent embryo in the frozen cycle and if you consider both cycles together uh, then uh, these methods will add um, um, especially um, using um, um, uh, biopsy of the embryo or time-lapse time photography is not going to increase the total potential coming from an IVF cycle.